This is Eric L. Donovan, the Mindset Disruption Strategist. Let's talk about tax planning. More specifically, let's talk about gift taxes versus estate taxes and how understanding one difference could save you millions in tax dollars. But before we do that, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so that you will get updates every single time I put out a new video that's helping you create impact and build generational prosperity. And in addition, I'd love for you to like and comment on this video just to kind of hear what you're thinking and what you're seeing. So one of the things that I like to talk about quite a bit with you is the fact that the industry puts you into a place of what I call unconscious manipulation. Meaning you end up with outcomes that are less than ideal, not on purpose, but just because of the entropy that's happening inside of the overall industry. And one of the places that that happens, more specifically, centers around estate taxes versus gift taxes. Now, there's a lot of nuances. And one of the things you'll know about my videos is I like to simplify things just to help you gather a concept. So I'm not going to get into the complete weeds of all the nuances and things that could be done, but I want to make you aware of a situation that, again, could save you millions of dollars. Now, before I dig into this, I'm going to throw up an example of what the current situation could be and then how it could be adjusted and what could be done to make it better. Now, before I do that, let me just give you a little bit of a word of warning. I'm gonna throw up a number of 50 million and you're gonna be like, well, Eric, that ain't me. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, here's what you need to know. As it stands today, there's not an estate tax due until you have at least $26 million. So to really make this conversation relevant, this is relevant to people who have a higher net worth and that includes businesses and everything that real estate, everything that you own. But another thing that you need to be aware of, you're like, well, Eric, I'm, I'm getting up there, but I'm not quite there, is that that number at 24 million, 12 million a couple, it's 12 million per person. So then as a couple, it's 24 million. That number gets cut in half on January 1st, 2026, based on current law. Now, during my lifetime, it's been as low as a million dollars a piece. So don't let the fact that I'm gonna throw up some big numbers throw you off from understanding the reality of what I want you to see inside of this. So let's get to it. So let's imagine someone's just gonna do traditional planning, planning I see all day, every day, inside of this world of what I'd call unconscious manipulation of guess what? You want to leave everything to the kids and you're going to have to pay estate taxes. So it is just the world that it is. What happens? So we have Bob and Mary Smith, $50 million. So when the first of them passes away, there's no tax due. That's one of the things that's written into our current tax law. 37940 goes into Mary Smith's possession. And then typically there's a trust created to hold Bob's benefit because he's not here anymore. So 12 million, I said, is the current exemption of zero estate taxes or gift taxes that are due. And we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. But $12 million goes, and you're gonna notice no taxes are paid, right? So this is on the first death. On the second death, or during this first death, just really quick too, while we're looking at this, income and principal can be picked. If Mary needed more than the 37 million, she can get income and principal from this other trust. It's not like it's off limits, but it's more just to protect that exemption. And we could get into the weeds. There's some other things that have been written into the tax law to protect that exemption. I'm not going over or into that today. I want you to understand this from a high level. But when Mary passes away, there's estate taxes based on current law due of $8.3 million. The family gets this $12 million from the trust. Mary's portion of the 37.9 has to pay the 8.3 million in estate taxes. And then whatever's left over goes to the family, which is 24.5 million, $36.6 million going to the family. Because in this example, what we believe is that all families should consider being generous. And this family wanted to make a gift of $5 million to a giving fund. So part of you would say, wow, Eric, $36 million to the family, that's a lot. It is a lot. But 
what if the goal was the same, but instead of waiting and paying estate taxes, the exemptions for gift taxes are also 12 million, but there's a unique factor about gift taxes I wanna show you that actually saves you so much money. And let me show you what that looks like. So we've got Bob and Mary Smith, again, with the $50 million. But let's say instead of waiting until they passed away, what they believed is that they could live on $5 million of what's left over. And that 5 million is arbitrary. Again, we can move these numbers around. I simply want you to see this from a simplistic nature of standpoint. That $39 million, there are other ways to we're just saying that that is the gift that is given. There's some annual exclusions and other things like that, that if you're watching this and you know tax law, you're like, Eric, you didn't calculate for this. I know I didn't calculate for that. I'm trying to make this simple and understandable. But if they made a gift of $39 million that was subject to gift taxes, the gift tax bill is 5.966. You remember the estate tax bill was eight. So let me show you what happened. So they do that gift during their lifetime. $5 million goes to Mary. I said that they could live on $5 million, but it needs to be more than that. There's adjustments that need to be made. But let's say this family knew they could live on 5 million. They didn't need the rest of it and they're trying to get it to their kids. So they make lifetime gifts, $5.9 million in taxes. That 5 million, remember they were making a $5 million gift to the charity that $5 million goes down to the nonprofit, the estate tax or the tax that was due on getting this $39 million to the family was 5.966. Now, what happened? Well, because these gifts were made during their lifetime, the family actually got 39 million instead of in the previous example, do you remember? It was 36.6 million. They got the 36.6 million after Bob and Mary passed away. They're getting $39 million during their lifetime. This is one of the reasons I'm so passionate about having conversations about lifetime inheritance. It's not just a financial conversation, but could the family use this earlier rather than having to wait until Bob and Mary pass away? And this also comes down to making sure Bob and Mary know what they need to live on. And some of you might say, well, five million is not enough. Well, this example still works because as we're going to talk about in a second, it's this idea of gift taxes being a better choice than estate taxes. And there's a lot of other tools that are out there. And I've got another set of videos that are coming out that are going to talk about why estate taxes are optional anyway. But for this example today, I just want you to understand the difference between gift and estate taxes. The gift taxes are $2.3 million less than the estate tax. And that's money that the family can keep the family can control. Remember my past conversations and examples on taxes is once you pay a tax, that money's gone. You can never get it back again. So what's happening? Why the difference of $2.3 million in taxes? Why so much more to the family? Well, here's why. Gift taxes are exclusive, meaning that the tax is based on the value of the gift. The taxes are based on the 39 million. So taxes on giving 39 million is 5.9 million. Estate taxes are inclusive. And what that means is that the estate tax, that $8 million is included in the value of everything that's taxed. So you know you're gonna make a gift of 39 million, then they tell you how much tax you owe as opposed to having the estate tax being inclusive, which is what happens after you're dead, they're basing the tax based on the total value, then they take the tax dollar out. And again, that is a huge difference. And financially, it's a difference of $2.3 million. They go back to this idea of this strategy got money to the family during their lifetime. How much more powerful was that? What else were they able to do? What more things were they able to do? And you're like, well, Eric, they had to pay the taxes during their lifetime as well. Yeah, they did. But at the same time, getting the money to the family and paying 2.3 million, don't you think that the family could leverage that? I mean, even if you look at kind of the rule of 72, 2.3 million becomes pretty close to this 5.9 and you know, about 10 years at a 7% return. So it's not like they've completely missed out on it and the leverage of what can be done inside of this is powerful. So the next time that you're just sitting around and you're thinking, hey, I kind of need to think about what I want to do for my family 
and how I want to make an impact on them financially. So many times we just surrender to this idea of, well, I've just got to, I'm going to have to pay the estate taxes. What's left is left. This is why having a conversation with a trusted partner who strategically helps you understand what you're wanting to do and how to prioritize it. See, until Bob and Mary understand that they can live on 5 million, this example isn't feasible. If they're guessing or wondering what they could actually live on, this is not a feasible example. And there's a lot of other things that go into this, but most people do not understand the nuances of what's possible and they rely on their professionals. And I'm gonna tell you what, you may have great professionals, but the majority of them are also caught in this industry of unconscious manipulation. Again, it's not happening on purpose of the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is just pay the estate tax. It has nothing to do with the strategic planning or really helping you get down to figuring out exactly how much you can live on and optimizing your living, optimizing the inheritance and minimizing the amount of taxes that are flowing through that. It's not the way that the industry built or the way that things happen. So I hope that this was eye opening for you today and just an opportunity to take a look and go, hmm, there are things that are different. And knowing the difference between gift and estate tax could save you a lot of money. And if you're a person who wants to make a greater impact and who wants to build generational prosperity, wouldn't understanding and knowing this be important? I think it would. So thank you for being here. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.